Welcome back. I'm Ryan Peabody with my colleague, Greg Treat. Hello. Uh, we're attorneys here in South Lake, Texas. And today uh, we've got a, a couple topics right now, but we're going to be focused on uh, being your own boss is 24 seven and it really is. And sometimes you got to do things that you don't like doing. And uh, sometimes uh, you get to do things that uh, are really fun and exciting. But it's all about uh, being an entrepreneur and it's, uh, if it's, if it's for you, that's great. If it's not, then uh, know that going into it or don't go into it. So I think the first the first question is, Ryan, what what posture should you be in when you're going into, into a business, when you're starting up a business? Is this something you should do when you're on your last leg, when you're running out of money, when your bank account's empty? Where should you be at? All right, I've started a lot of businesses, uh, including a, a successful law firm. And I can tell you that Preparation is the key to success. You need to have a business plan. You got to know how much things are going to cost and then like add 50% to it because it's going to cost more than you think it's going to cost for everything. You're buying office supplies, you're buying software, you're buying, you know, the chairs you sit in and stuff just adds up. Then you get into computer equipment. Oh my gosh. If you don't want just a cheap piece of junk computer, you're literally paying a thousand dollars or thousands of dollars for these things. And yes, it's tax deductible if you do it correctly and you got your entity and you're writing it off properly. But uh, my gosh, it's expensive. It's easier to get going with services than, mm -hmm. than things like goods and manufacturing. So different, you know, businesses require different amounts of money to get going. But you've got to be prepared. Put together a business plan. You don't need to get lost in the minutia of every little tiny detail. This is one of my major faults. You know, I want everything down to the pen and paper to be correct. Uh, but really, you need to have an idea of what you're doing, how you're doing it, and some basic processes in place to deliver your services in a consistent, uncompromised way that maintains the quality of the work that's going to get you referrals and going to get you great reputation in the community as you move forward. All right. So one of the key resources, as you've said repeatedly throughout in some of the earlier episodes, you are your business, you are the face of your business, all of those things. What, what kinds of personality resources do you need when you're starting a business or thinking about starting a business? First of all, most small businesses and, and we form hundreds of LLCs for people and help hundreds and hundreds of people get going with their small businesses. Most of them don't have a marketing budget. Mm. That's fine. Uh, but what they're going to do is they're, they're doing marketing, th marketing through sweat equity. So you're going out there, you're doing networking, you're engaging with the Chamber of Commerce or Rotary or some social clubs, maybe some charities. Maybe you're getting involved with the city or different organizations specific to your particular uh, sector in the market. And, and that's fine. But you need to be ready to be uncomfortable. You need to be ready to stand in front of a group of people, 5, 10, 50, 100 people, if it's like a big luncheon or something, and say, hey, this is who I am. This is what I do. You need to be concise and confident and then deliver on that. If you don't want to do that or you don't see yourself doing that, having your own business may not be for you. I don't know. Only you can answer that question. And you have to have the type of personality or be willing to evolve yourself into the type of personality that is outgoing, but genuine and honest, not over the top, but straightforward. Uh, observe other people in your community that are doing this successfully and model your behavior after them. You don't need to reinvent the wheel here. Pick the people that you admire, that you are uh, can go and interact with locally and model yourself. Pick up their cues. What are they doing? How do they make eye contact? How do they introduce themselves? And build on that. Use that as a starting point. So we hear people talk about like a lot of the time, well, this is just my personality. You see that in, I mean, in any office that I've ever been a part of, there's a couple people that their excuse is always, well, I just don't, I, I can't get into it. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not feeling it as, as a business owner. Is that, is that ever an excuse? Uh, I mean, if you, if you don't want business, that's fine, <laughs> but yeah, know who you are. If you're the kind of person that you like sitting in the office doing work that's put on your desk and then you get to go home at five every day, great. I actually think that's probably most people. And you can have a tremendously successful career doing that. Uh, uh, you don't have to be, uh, in law we like to call it the rainmaker, right? This is the business development person, uh, the person that goes and brings in business. If that's not you, that's not you and know that. And get yourself a job somewhere, working for another company, become part of the team, um, you know, maybe you're better at finance or accounting in the back end. 
Terrific, then do, do that. You don't need to be an entrepreneur, but if you're gonna have your own business, be prepared to do those things or uh, give very strong thought into, into just not doing them at all. Mm. And by not doing them, I mean, don't do your own your own business. Right, work for somebody else that, that has, and, and this is, you know, as an employee, if you're working for a small business, if you don't have confidence that your boss has those qualities, you, you probably need to be updating your resume as as they say yeah uh, because that business fair. is not gonna not gonna make it very far uh, one of the things that business owners constantly talk about is for them is the the advantages the benefits of flexibility what what does flexibility mean when as a, as a small business owner in a community yeah so I, I've, I've, I've got a uh, I've, I've got a business flexibility means that if I need to go run an errand, and I, and I avoid doing these personal things, because I you know I, I come to the office, I'm doing work. That's what, that's what I'm here for. But if I need to go do something, then I don't really have to. I don't have to ask permission to anybody. I can just kind of schedule that. Right. Uh, I don't really need to get permission to take vacation, which I almost never get to do. But <laughs> welcome to being a small business owner. Uh, you you do have some flexibility in what you do, but know that you're 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 sacrificing other things like stability of paychecks, you know, re retirement benefits. You got to set these kind of things up yourself. They're not just going to be there for you. So you've really got to it's got to really match your personality, match the goals of yourself as an individual, yourself as if you have a family, you're you're supporting people. You got to make darn sure that you're checking these boxes. And if you do go out on your own, you're thinking about these sorts of things because they're important. Right. So retirement becomes an exit plan. What, what, what kinds of exit plans are there? Uh, I mean, re retirement is, for the small business is, is or should be the same as larger businesses. You should be setting money aside for your retirement. Uh, and if that's you know, a 401k, set up a 401k for your own business. If it's an IRA or Roth IRA or whatever that mechanism is, set that up for your own business, but, but be doing so deliberately. Uh, I have a lot of small business owners and some of them have had success with this, I will admit, to where they don't really have a retirement plan, but they say, well, I'm gonna sell my business at some point. Mm. It's a dangerous game. Uh, I wouldn't rely solely on that or rely heavily on that because a lot of small businesses really aren't worth anything and they're not really not sellable. Particularly service businesses. Yeah, they're, they're hard to do. Uh, even even small law firms are just hard to sell because the value is in you. You're, you're, the, you're the person, the, you know, the service providers are the people. Uh, so be thinking about what your retirement plan is and don't, don't wait too long to implement that. Right, you should be thinking of your exit even as you're, as you're coming in. You should have some idea. Yeah, think, as your, think of your exit even as your entrance. And I think, you know, to, to your point, I mean, what this, what this will do is it'll force you to take into consideration not just, am I gonna sell this in 30 years at the end of my career? Or hey, maybe I've got the type of business that I want to build up for five years, three years, seven years, somewhere in there and actually legitimately sell this thing. And so if I'm going to do that, what steps and processes do I need to put in place to make it valuable? And you're going to learn along the way, but doing that exit strategy at the beginning, part of the business plan is going to ask those questions and it's going to make you a stronger, healthier company for it. So, you know, one of the things they talk about being the small business owner or the proprietor, you're the, you're the chief cook and bottle washer. So you, if, if there's not somebody that you've set up or something you've set up to do it, you're the guy when, 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 the, when the time comes. So what, what, what kind of stories do you have about working late, <laughs> about stuff that you've done? Okay, yeah, I'll, 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 tell, you, I'll tell you two stories. So when I was first getting started, I had a, a small office and, um, <clears throat> We would do a, uh, I would, I'd get a new client in to do a legal project and, you know, legal like everything else, it takes a certain amount of time. You got to sit down and draft it up, draft up the contracts or put together the LLC or draft a trust or, you know, whatever your, the area that you practice in is, you know, for lawyers that is. And so I would do uh, an estate plan, for example, wills or trusts and powers of attorney. And we do a lot of this type of work and I really enjoy it. But uh, it'd, be, it'd become a point where during the day I would be doing client communications and information gathering and finish my research. It'd be five, six o'clock and I've got these, you know, 100 pages worth of documents that I've got to deliver at some point. And so, or even the next day. So I cannot tell you how many times I was up till one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning drafting and prepping and having my documents ready so that my clients would come in and all they had to do is sign it and I could explain it and it was done. 
But that's what I had to do. I had to do. There was nobody else. Mm -hmm. If I left, it was gonna. I was gonna come back to the office, and the pen was gonna be in the same place where I left it. The paper was gonna be the same place where I left it. Nobody came in and did the work for me. So if you are an entrepreneur, you better be prepared not to just go the extra mile, but to keep marching and keep trudging until the job is done. Period. Yeah. And let me tell you something. At three o'clock in the morning you look at that you've got another two or three hours of work to do to, to, to finish that, and you start thinking to yourself, well, I'm gonna cut corners, I'm gonna compromise. That is a, a death wish to any company. Mm -hmm. Never cut corners and compromise. On a few occasions, I even had to reach out to the client and say, listen, I can't deliver this because it's not at the quality that I want it to be. I need another day or two. And every single time they go, yeah, no problem. No problem, because they're paying you for top quality work. Sure. They're not paying you to compromise or to cut corners. Never, ever cut corners and compromise because you're just diluting your own brand name. But yeah, yeah I can't even tell you how many times I, I, I had to stay up, you know. I mean, even a couple of times we had to pull an all nighter, mm -hmm. which I thought I would never do. After law school. After law school. <laughs> and but you, you gotta do what you gotta do. And you know, you know, doing that, there's there's pride in it. And you know, you're you're up in the middle of the night and you know, there's uh that's where that's where the magic happens. I mm. mean, you can you can do some good work doing that. I don't recommend that because you want to be sharp and focused. But if you need to do it, you can do it to pull it off and to get it done. Yeah. Well, and you're worse than just a small business owner. You are a property owner. So what's uh, what's some mm. stories about being a prop? And, and and these things frequently go together, right? A lot of small sure. businesses yes. and, and successful business owners eventually acquire property or manage property as right. As so so I uh, yes, I own, I own the property that that many of my businesses reside in. And uh, as, as a result of that, you uh, for for one of them, for example, you know our, our law offices, we have a cleaning crew that comes in, you know, a cu couple times a week, and then you know they change the trash and clean everything up, make sure there's soap in the dispenser, and we've contracted with them to do this. And I don't know what it is, but every once in a while, you have a, a client come in, or a, let's just call it a a visitor comes to your business. <laughs> this is embarrassing to say this, but. Uh, they'll they'll go use the restroom that you have on site, and they'll 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 plug the toilet. Whatever the toilet reason, was plugged. Yes, and you'll find out about this, and it it always seems to be the day after the cleaning crew comes in, and so you can't leave a plugged toilet in your office for two or three days in a row. It just it's not possible. So yes, on on so many occasions, not so many occasions. I'll I'll I'll, I'll walk that back. On a few occasions that I can remember. Uh, somebody comes to me like the staff or somebody and says, Hey Ryan, the, the toilet's plugged and it's, it's what you think it is. It's a mess. <laughs> and, um, you know, we're getting ready to go to court. So I've got a nice shirt on or a nice suit or something and, you know, professional attire, invariably nice shoes and, you know, getting ready to go present on something. And, but you just can't leave things like this. Because clients are coming in, or, or your 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 uh, your team members are, are in there, and they need to use the facility. You know, it's, it's what it is. So, on several occasions, I've literally had to roll up my sleeves on a nice shirt, in my nice dress pants, and plunge a dirty toilet. But the point there is, as a business owner, you've got to be willing to do anything. Mm -hmm. uh, and I am not going to ask my people to do something, my team to do something that I'm not willing to do myself. I will take out the trash. I will plunge and clean the dirty toilet if that's what needs to be done. Get it done at all costs. That's that's what you need to do and you should be prepared to do that. Yeah. It's not fun, but it got done. It did. And it was back up and running. It was. So, bravo, just, sir. Yeah, yeah, make sure you wash your hands afterward, you know, <laughs> check your, you know, your clothes check your shirt. and then, you know, away you go on to the next thing. So, that's how you, you know, little little small building blocks on how to build a business. Mm -hmm. So what, um, you know, as, as a business owner, you're, you're interacting with people and say you've been out in the community, you've kind of met them, established an initial connection. What happens next when, when what, what's kind of the main thing that you do to, to, to bring people in? Uh, to bring people in, it's not in, in, in my business, which is primarily the practice of law. It's not really about, I, I don't ask them to do business with me. In mm -hmm. fact, soliciting someone to do business with you as a lawyer is actually prohibited. So uh, it's it's more about sharing what you do. You know, we do a lot of uh, estate and business work. We litigate in these areas, a lot of transactional. And it's just telling people what they do, what you do. Uh, you say, hey, this is what I do and what do you do? And then they know what you do and they'll call you. 
and they'll uh, they'll follow up if they want to they want to engage you for services. Right. So, uh, what what kind of context does that happen? Do you take people out to lunch, or do you do you have events here at the firm? Yeah, I'll, t- I'll tell you. I'll tell you one last thing with being a small business owner. Let me let me kind of give uh, the people watching a little bit of guidance uh, on how to take somebody to lunch because I, I get this question pretty frequently. And I actually somebody asked me yesterday. They go, Yeah, how do I take somebody to lunch? Who pays for it? What do I do? Here's your protocol for taking somebody to lunch as a business professional. If you ask somebody to lunch, you take them to lunch somewhere, they meet you there, you're the engaging party that says, I'd like you to go to lunch with me to connect with you for business, whatever it is, you're paying for lunch, that's it. If you can't afford to pay for lunch, go to a place you can't afford or don't ask them to lunch, you're paying for lunch. So you're sitting there, when the bill comes, the server might ask a question, is this gonna be on uh, one tab or is it, you want me to split the check up? And just very subtly, be cool about it. Just say, just one and bring me the bill. That's it. When it comes, don't even examine it. Don't look at it. Just take out your credit card or your business credit card. Put it in there. Put it aside like it's nothing. And pay it. Give a, give a nice healthy tip to your server. Be friendly to the server. That's the protocol. Uh, if someone asks you to lunch, you can expect that they should be paying for lunch as well. But I would always offer. Mm. Even if they invite you to lunch, you go to lunch with them. So yeah, let me, let me get it this time. You know, it's my turn. Maybe it's not your turn, but say it's your turn. And if they're classy and they invited you to lunch, they'll pay for it anyway. You're fine. You're in good shape. But if you pay for it, you've learned something about them and you did the classy thing. So whenever you go to lunch with anybody, whether you got invited or somebody invited you, always be prepared to pay for lunch. Uh, checks should not be split. One person should be paying for that. And that person should be you, or at least at the very minimum, you should offer, always offer to pay for lunch. Or, or if you can't do that, mm-hmm. you shouldn't be going to lunch. That's the protocol with, uh, with going to lunch. So, and any other kind of final thoughts about what it means to be a business owner and, and kind of the, the input that you're putting in? You just be prepared to, get, to give 100% input because your competitor down the street is going to give 100%. And you're not in competition with people if you are full throttle giving 100% all the time. Because the amount of people that are willing to give just 100% and you know work late, work early, make it happen, those people are so uncommon and so rare that they're really, in my view, they're really not in competition with mm-hmm. each other. Uh, they've run so far down the track that you look behind you and there's a whole group of people back there, and metaphorically speaking, of course, that they're just not in competition with you anymore. So I wouldn't be worried about your competitors, just outwork them and it's gonna solve itself. And so when you're the small business owner, just be willing to do the extra mile, go the extra mile, always make it happen under all circumstances and you're, go- you're gonna be successful. Just keep reinventing yourself, keep, uh, keep evolving uh, your business and your practice and everything you do and analyze everything you do and say, hey, am I doing this well? Could I be doing this better? Should I stop doing this? Should I add this behavior? And just a constant evolution and be dynamic. Your largest strength as a small business is your ability to react quickly. Hmm. All right, well, I think that sums it up pretty well. Thank you so much for watching The Legal Ease Show and we'll see you next time. Thank you. 